Hey guys, we're back at the bench. This is a JTM45 Mojo Tone kit. It was built by a local player. Uh, he bought it in here for me to finish the amp. And while he was here, we talked about, you know, did you want to keep it stock or were you after some mods? And we're going to mod it. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to rebuild the front end of the amp, preamp, right? And change the preamp from this uh, JTM45 configuration into a JCM800. And in doing that, add a gain structure switch, which uh, changes the setup of the cathode resistor on the second gain stage. This amp will basically end up like a Dirty Shirley, which is you know, a JCM800 front end into a JTM45 power stage. This is the same amp that I used recently in a couple of clips to demonstrate how I use my digital oscilloscope and a multimeter during a first power on procedure. Um, so do check those out. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so the basic approach here is right, we're gonna kind of rebuild this front end here. Now, in a JTM45, similar to, you know, a 1959 Super Lead, 1987, 50 watt uh, plexi. It's a four hole amp, right? And these things, these pairs of inputs come in through these 68K pair resistors here into either side of V1. The JTM45 has a shared cathode, right? So um, the cathode stage for both triodes in V1 is shared, which is why there's a wire straight across these pins here, right? And if you trace the yellow wire, it goes down to this resistor and bypass cap to ground. So I need to reconfigure all of this because we're going to have split cathode each side of V1. I want to have uh, its you know own cathode resistor and bypass cap. I'm going to remove these 68K resistors um, and we're only going to have a high input and a low input. These will move onto the jacks. And it'll free up these turrets on the board here for me to use for other purposes, like setting up an extra, a separate cathode resistor for the other side of this, um, and also a voltage divider between the two gain stages. Because in the 800 preamp, of course, I'm going to cascade the output of uh, V1A into V1B. On the front here, these inputs, as I said, we're only going to have two input jacks, right? So I'll be left with two spare holes in front of the amp. I'll use one of these for um, the structure switch, which, as I mentioned in the intro, will be all about changing the overall gain level of the amp. There will be one hole spare. <laughs>
a very quick tone test out here. Um, I finished the work on the conversion of this thing. We've now got, you know, what is basically a hot rodded JCM 800 front end into the JTM 45 front uh, backing, I should say. And I have taken the opportunity, not on the video, but um, I've just run a signal through, a test signal on the scope to see that um, she's all working. Um, so I'm getting signal all the way through to the speaker output. So um, if you're interested in seeing kind of how to use a scope to trace a signal through, have a look at my previous video. So let's have a listen to this thing. I've got the game here. Um, I'll start at about 1 p.m. Okay. And I've got the structure switch, three-way structure switch here, which is setting up the, um, the second cathode, right? So 10K is the middle position, which is the lowest gain. So this is, you know, the old JCM 800 cold clipper. Um, I've got the treble at about 1 p.m., the mid's midday. I've got the bass at about 11 a.m. And the presence is about 1 p.m. Um, let's have a listen to this thing. hiss coming through the speaker cab there. Let me move it to the uh, first structured position. So this changes the 10k cathode and puts a 4k7 resistor in parallel with the 10k. You can hear that familiar structure switch. Right? That's what's happening there is the DC voltage is changing on the cathode resistor. Um, and whenever you change a flicker DC you get a pop. No way around that. Uh, all right, so here we've got more gain. We should have more gain. Gain still on 1 p.m. on the pot. <laughs> position it is a 3k3 resistor with a 0.68 microfarad bypass cap in parallel with the 10k so it basically gives you a 2k7 uh, with a 0.68 bypass which is exactly the same as the first cathode right so this is your kind of classic cascaded 2k7 0.68 microfarad uh, cathodes very common in a hot rod of Marshall. Here we go, and let's try. <laughs> So how do we do it? Okay, first thing I'll say is that the detailed picture that is up on the video right now, I will post on the website under the uh, AMP Mods 
page, so head to headfirst.com and you'll see I've got a page there set out with a whole bunch of amp mods um, and I'll put this picture of my uh, DS40 conversion of this Mojo Tone JTM45 there for your reference. All right, so let's step through it. On the left hand side here, this is the standard Mojo Tone 45 um, you know, wiring layout diagram that's up on their website. Um, and this is pretty much the kit that was handed to me to finish, right? So I only had a, just only probably one or two bugs um, that were left in the build from the guy that did it. And we had the 45 up and running. It sounded like a, you know, JTM 45. So to make this into a DS40, right? So what it is, is basically a JCM 800 front end into a JTM45 back end, as we know. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is see this shared cathode here. So I mentioned this earlier in the video. So you've got one cathode resistor here for V1 with a cap here that's a you know, bypass cap, uh, but it's bridged across V1A and V1B. All right, so we need to split that. So over to the right here, you can see I've, I've got rid of that completely, cut that out and I've replaced the cathode set up for V1A with a 2K7 resistor with a 0.68 microfarad uh, electrolytic cap. It's a 50 volt cap. You know, if you can't find a 50, get a 100. Um, either of those are fine. You don't need to use an electrolytic cap if you don't want to, if you've got, you know, um, some sort of other uh, bypass cap type that you want to use there you know, feel free, right? What I've done here is I've pulled out the 268K resistors. And you can see them here. I right, pulled them out completely and I put them up on the, uh, the, there's two jacks here. I've left those completely as they are, right? So leave these wide as they are, but set your 268K resistors off these two points on the, um, on the low input jack it is, actually. And you run shielded coax, right? So this green wire here is the shield that I've soldered on to this shield of this coax and it runs up and it connects to this ground here. This is a ground point. Um, and then you run your shielded coax all the way to the grid of V1A. Okay. All right, now with the 68Ks here gone, I can now use these three turrets to set up my cathode for V2B, right? You want a 10K resistor in here. That means in the in the base, you know, the lowest gain setting, you've got 2K768, uh, 2K7.68 microfarad um, cathode and a 10K. That's a JCM800, right? Right there. So run your cathode from that 10K, make sure you ground it, I right? ground it to this point here cross to the cathode on V2B. Okay, the other thing you need to do on V1A in the stock JT, JTM45, this is a 100K resistor. Set this to 220K, you'll get more gain, but more compression out of that first gain stage. Okay, so your input signal is amplified by this first gain stage here. Here's the plate, right, uh, the anode or the plate of, of V1A, your guitar signal will make its way through this coupling cap, which will block the high voltage DC. So there'll be no DC voltage on this side, it should be zero. And from here, we are making our way um, to, you can see this orange wire here, to the gain pot, right? This is a 470K resistor with a 500 picofarad uh, mica cap bypassed on it into the input of the gain pot. From the wiper of the gain pot, you've got shielded coax again, right? Grounded over here on the slug, the ground lug of your, of your gain pot. Run the shielded coax underneath the board to the grid of V2B, all right? So now we're cascading. We're cascading our gain stages. So V1A is, going to, is now feeding V1B via this gain pot, okay? 
We've already mentioned V2B, the cathode, is set up here. That's the 10K resistor. The plate is the regular 100K. That's stock. This is stock. Nothing has changed here. Um, your guitar signal will be amplified via V2B. It'll make its way through this coupling cap. DC on this side, no DC on this side. And then we've got a 470K voltage divider. Right? So from here, you connect straight across. Got to bridge those. Okay, and then 470k here. So in the stock JTM45, you can see I've got 270k resistors here, 270k, 270k, and a, and a 250k, sorry, a 250 picofarad bypass. You rip all that out, put two 470ks in here. You've got to ground this one. So see my link here that's grounding onto this ground point, which is already there on the board. And then from here, you're running into V3. Uh, sorry, V2A's grid, okay, which is the uh, third gain stage of the amplifier. And it is set up with a cathode, an 820K cathode in the stock JTM45. You leave that the same, don't touch it, all right? So you leave all that stock, which is helpful. Then on to V2B, this is our cathode follower. All right, 100K resistor there, setting up the cathode follower. That's all stock, all right, leave all that. Um, you've got a 100K uh, resistor here off the cathode of V2B, okay? It's underneath this capacitor. This is a 2.2 nanofarad cap, which is uh, in parallel with that 100K to ground. All right, it's just knocking off some top end. The other things you'll need to change uh, is the tone stack values, all right? So in a JTM45, I think this is a 220 picofarad and maybe a 56K here, right? You want stock plexi values, 33K, slope resistor here, and a 500 picofarad uh, mica cap here, all right? So this is your, kind of your treble, treble capacitor, okay? Um, and from there, you're off into the tone stack. While this pitches up, let's talk about this structure switch. Here it is here. Right. I'll talk about what these resistors are in, in a second. Um, but I'll, the first thing to note is that it connects via this yellow wire here to this side, which is the, you know, the tube side of the 10K cathode resistor for V1B. Um, what it effectively does, right, and the middle of the switch is a, it's a on off on three way switch, and the middle lug of the switch is grounded. That's what that ground wire there is. And I've just grounded it across here on the you know, ground that's available here for the input jack. Um, when you flick the switch either you know, up or down, it's bringing these other resistors in parallel with this 10K. This is ground, and this is ground, right? So this is one side, and then when you toggle the switch, you're bringing in either this resistor on top or the resistors underneath. And the setup is 10K is what you're getting in the middle position. When you flick to the um, second stage gain, you're getting a 4.7K um, resistor now in parallel with this 10K. When you flip to the other way, it's a 3.3K resistor with a 0.68 microfarad bypass cap. Same one here. It's underneath us, you just can't see it, but it's there. So when that's in the highest gain position, the effect of the 3.3K resistor with the 10K resistor and the 0.68 microfarad cap means that you're basically getting 2.7K. Um, same as what you have on V1A. So you're getting V1A cascading into V1B and they both have the same cathode setup. If you're looking closely, you can see I don't have a 3.3K resistor here. What I've got is two 6.8K resistors in parallel. You know, I was searching through my resistors. I didn't have a 3.3K, would you believe? So um, I improvised and created a 3.3, or close to. 
by putting two 6.8K resistors in parallel. So let's just talk about a couple of other things uh, that kind of complete the mod to a DS40. So where we were, right? So we were talking about the tone stack, the 500 picofarad uh, cap here. It makes its way off to the tone stack. Here's the treble, middle, and bass pots. Okay. Um, now, before we kind of talk about uh, what's going on here, just a, one other thing to mention. This is the gain pot, and I mentioned 470k with a 500 picofarad in parallel here. Right, coming from this first gain stage. Um, that resistor there is a 220k resistor, and it's running from the input of this pot to ground, right? If you're following the channel and you see, you've seen some of the things that I've been doing with respect to this kind of hot rodded JCM800, you'll, you'll sometimes see this 220k resistor. I will actually tune the amp, depends on the amp that I've got that I'm working on, whether I will use this, Sometimes I'll change the value, the value of it, but it will actually allow you to, kind of, to control how much gain is coming through the preamp. If you don't have that 220k there, you just got the one meg gain pot, you'll, get, you'll have more gain coming through. Um, the DS40 has the 220k there. Um, you know, I've done amps where I put a one meg in there. You know, sometimes I, I don't have it at all. Sometimes I go down to 220. Uh, you know, you can kind of tune that to your taste. Um, back to the tone stack. So your signal will come out of the treble wiper, right? This middle lug of the treble pot. Now this is a 220K to 221K resistor actually, but you can just put a 220K resistor in here, right? Good old regular carbon film um, if you have it from the treble wiper across to the input. This is the master volume pot. All right. I will be installing an effects loop in this amp, All right. so, but I've built it so far, well I've modded it, I should say, so far uh, without the effects loop. The effects loop will go in last, you know, as I always say, confirm everything works, then put your effects loop in after. So 220k off the treble wiper into the input of the master volume. This is a 1 meg resistor from the input of the master volume to ground, right? So effectively makes the master volume pot, which is a one meg audio taper pot, like a 500K, right? Because you've got two one megs in parallel to ground. Um, and then off the uh, the wiper of the master volume, you go straight in to the uh, input of the phase inverter right here, this orange wire, straight off the wiper into the input of the phase inverter. So two other things that I changed in the kind of power section of the amp. Okay, the first one, let's talk about negative feedback. So here's our impedance selector here. This is the eight ohm tap, it's the one in the middle. Okay, um, 220K resistor with a 4.7 nanofarad cap in parallel. This is a fixed depth circuit, right? So when you don't have a depth pot, this is a good way to do it. Put your 220K, your 4.7 nanofarad, run it off your impedance selector and then into uh, the negative feedback. The JTM45 has a 27K resistor here as stock. Change it to 47K, it'll liven up the amp a bit. Um, and the last thing is changing the screen setup, uh, the screen supply, I should say. So in that Mojo Tone JTM45 kit, it has a 1K uh, 10 watt cement resistor sitting in here, which is this blue wire is coming off the, um, uh, well, that's actually the filter cap for it, right? So what I should say is the black wire here is the other end of the choke. So this black wire here is coming off the B plus line, goes through the choke, this is the other end of the choke, and it's our screen supply. And that blue wire is our screen supply uh, cap, right, which um, is the filter cap. Now, in that Mojo Tone layout, if you have a look at it, you'll see there's a 1K 
um, resistor here, 10 watt. And then it feeds two, respectively, 470 ohm uh, screen resistors, right? So that's kind of, you know, there's quite a lot of sag there uh, on the screen supply. Um, so I removed that. You can leave that if you want, right? If you really want that kind of, you know, saggy kind of JTM45 feel, particularly once you, you know, kind of crank the master volume, feel free to leave it there. You know, there's no harm. Um, but, you know, I'm looking for something uh, that doesn't sag quite so much. So I've just linked this, right, to this orange wire here is linking, um, this is the choke, comes through here to this turret here, and then this turret here is feeding uh, the screen pins on each of these sockets. And uh, bear in mind, of course, that this JTM45 kit from Mojotone um, is actually EL34 powered. So, you know, you could actually argue that you might want to have 1K screen resistors in here. Well, okay guys, I hope this uh, DIY guide was helpful. If you've got a JTM45 kit like this, you know, Seriotone build or Emojotone or, or whatever, and you're you know, looking to, you know, maybe modernize it, uh, have some fun with it, you know, hopefully this guide uh, is helpful. I will post some of these pictures um, and other documents up to the website, as I mentioned. Uh, happy modding.